So these are the topics that we are going to cover today. What is S T N policy? What are the different policy types? Policy key points: the edge order of operations, centralized policy, control plane overview, route types, and then centralized data policy. What are the type of policies, right? Centralized data policy, centralized control policy, default be smart behavior, be smart behavior with the centralized policy, policy components, and how to activate a policy. Also, what are the type of inbound and outbound control policies? So these are around uh, 13, 14 components of policy itself, right? Implementation of policies and all that. So what are the different type of policies that we have? So last time we have seen <coughs> there is a centralized policy and there is a localized policy, right? So let me present it in the bigger screen. You guys can see the screen, right? Yes. Okay. So you can see that Cisco ST Van centralized policies and localized policy. So our major focus is going to be centralized policies. Localized policies that we have been doing on Cisco IPsec VPN for a very long time. And it does it's not very exciting also. Right? The most exciting thing is the centralized policies and how do they work, etc. So under centralized policy, there are two types of policy, control plane policy and data plane policy. Under that you have a topology and you also have a VPN membership. In data plane, you have the same Cisco router that you have done, data traffic policies, net flow, and application aware routing. These are the things you have, you have also implemented using route maps and everything in the ordinary Cisco router. So same data plane, if you want to have an application aware routing, right, where the application should be aware of uh, the jitter delay and various parameters, you want to do policing of the traffic, right? You want to apply some kind of bursting policies or you want to policy the traffic in some other way, you will be using the data plane policy. And then we have localized policy which will affect a single device. Centralized policy affects the whole overlay fabric. That is not completely true. It can affect the whole overlay, but you also have a customized option where you can go and impact only two sites or three or whatever number of sites that you choose, you can impact those. But if you want to impact only the local site somewhere, you have to pick up the localized policy. So what is the control plane in Cisco SD-WAN? We have spent quite a lot of time on that, right? Uh, what is control plane? How does it work, etc.? So control plane is not plain and simple here. It has a lot of components. Uh, if we talk about in from Cisco SD-WAN perspective, we will we can say that vSmart is what owns the control plane, right? That's a place where you create the policies. So it's the vSmart uh, centralized component which takes care of in Cisco SD WAN, the vSmart controller represents the control plane of overlay fabric. So that is the most correct definition. That vSmart controller represents the control plane of the overlay fabric. Right? As simple as this. So every single control policy has to be created on vSmart itself. Although it has to be created at vManage, but it will actually be pushed from vManage to vSmart and vSmart will push it further to the respective routers. If the policy impacts two devices, two VH routers, so it will, imp you know, the vSmart will instruct only those two sites to follow the rules. Okay, it's very important to understand that VAN edge devices do not exchange any kind of control plane such as routes or T logs to one another. Now, this is a very powerful thing. Very, very powerful thing. Right? So these WAN edge devices, right, the edge routers, they do not have any routing information or they, they do have that information, whatever local they have, but they do not exchange routes and T logs with each other. They share with whom? vSmart. So they will not never talk to each other directly. This guy will not talk to this guy directly for, from control plane perspective. VH1 will not talk to VH2 or VH3 will not talk to them. Why? Because they will talk to each other. If they have to talk to each other, they will actually go to the vSmart. And vSmart will make, based on the policy, will allow them to communicate whatever communication. It's IPsec tunnel or data traffic or whatever it is. It, ha <coughs> it has to pass through vSmart control. Any any question or doubt up to here, guys? Oh, let me take uh, this the traditional routing. So in that case, suppose uh, if I'm king around one another router, so I will make the next hop myself. So, in this case, how control that behavior? Suppose the routing is being done by the vSmart controllers, isn't it? Yes. The control plane and this one. So, in this case, will it change the next one or how, how will it work? Yes. Suppose I want the data plane traffic between VHS to go directly. 
Okay, so what happens is the V smart will decide the next stop for these people. If V H one wants to talk to V H three, right? What will happen is V H one will be will have to go to V smart and will ask him the policy, or maybe you have already created a policy telling V one can talk to V three or not. Oh. But they cannot have policy on their own to talk to each other. The next stop oh. will also be decided by the policy. Let's say V H is can talk to V H two. Okay, let's if that is decided. So who will push that policy? Who will give the next stop? V Smart will do that. V H one and V H two cannot communicate to directly to each other, which means for now whatever I'm saying is from control plane perspective. Only control plane. Do not take it as a data plane because data plane though the two sides have to talk. That's the whole purpose of VPN. The whole purpose of VPN is the two sides have to talk to each other. Correct. So don't think it from a data plane perspective. That is the first thing. You have to whatever we are whatever we are discussing here is only control plane, right? So look at the top. It says, "Vanish devices do not exchange any kind of control plane information." Right? So control plane information, not the data plane. Data plane. Routing or you know next stop or everything else, there is no problem with that. They can exchange that. IPsec VPN related stuff, they can exchange that. No issues about it, right? So this applies only to the the control plane. So what are the different route types that we have in the VSmart controller that you learn from VHS OMP routes? These routes represent prefix information that Vanish devices learn from their local network. These could be connected network, static routes, or OSPF process running on site, redistributed into OMP. The OMP routes could be displayed using show OMP command. What is that? These routes represent prefix information of WAN edge devices from their local network. What are these routes? Basically, what is that we are talking about? The the service side VPN, right? Learned from the local network. Learned from the local network. So, connected networks. Static routes, OSP of process. We have seen that we have done the lab also of that. Those routes, right? Which when we have also run the show OMP command. So any private routes coming from the private side, those routes are like the service side VPN, VPN one thousand, VPN two thousand, any of the service side VPNs. Those routes are OMP routes. So what is T lock route then? T lock routes are the routes which you have built. Right to reach to rest of the T locks in the network. See uh, here, what happens is, let's say in our lab, it's very simple that you are connected to five, six devices on a local using one router and all that. That will not be the case in the real world. The real world will be a site with a IP address of five dot something dot something dot something will be there in New York. Other site thirteen dot something dot something will be there in Russia. The other site is going to be in Bangalore. The other site is going to be all these networks are going to be discrete networks, different networks, right? So maybe five dot subnet or thirteen dot subnet, twenty seven dot or sixty seven, whatever it is, they are absolutely a different place. So V Smart needs to know how to reach to these people. He needs to have that information with him. In a local network, it will not make much. We will not be able to basically figure out this much because we are directly connected kind of thing. But in the real world, right? V Smart needs to have that information. So those are T lock routes, right? You can call them WAN routers own routes, all the WAN routers routes, or the VPN zero routes. You can call that. It will be good to say VPN zero routes. Because VPN zero is T lock. T lock can only exist in VPN zero. T lock cannot exist anywhere else. Right. So WAN side routes. The third one is little confusion. Uh, generally, when we have, we don't know the full possibilities of the solution. Service chain routes. Service chain routes are basically that we have a capability in Cisco SD WAN to add a firewall or intrusion prevention system, etc. Which can be Cisco, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, FortiGate, anything else. You can add them physically to any location, and you can do virtual routing. In such a way 
that the traffic between two sites will pass through that or maybe 10 sites will pass through that firewall. So those, that is called service chaining. If you have done Cisco ACI and all that, you will understand it more. Service chaining, right? It's a virtual service. But behind it, it can be physical also. You can have a virtual firewall, virtual router, virtual... Or you can have a physical router, physical firewall, etc. And that is also fine. I'll give you one example there. Although we are going to do a lab on this, so it will be clear to you at that time. Let's say we have three sites right now. So this is site... Uh, what if you share that other tab? We are not seeing that. Yeah, sorry. So site one, site two, and site three. Three sites are there. Now what you want is that you have a firewall here. There is a firewall here. Okay, so there is a firewall here. You want all the traffic that is passing from site 2 to site 3 should pass through the firewall and then reach here. This could be anything. It could be F5. It can be LTM, GTM, whatever you want. It can be any third party thing. Or Cisco routers, FTD. It could be Palo Alto. Can be FortiGate. Any vendor, it does not matter. Also, tomorrow, you have another site coming here, site 4. So, site 4 also wants to communicate to site 3 and site 2. You can actually, just by inserting service once here, virtually you can force them. The virtual table will be created in such a way that they will be actually forced to pass through this. Maybe you don't want that. What you want is site 4 should not pass through the firewall to reach to site 2. So that is also possible. You don't want that. You want site 2 to pass through site 3 through firewall. That is possible. But another policy says site 4 should go directly to site 2. That is also possible. Policies are what you as an admin will create. Right? Policies are what you as admin will create. Those are, That is called the policies. Any question, anything, guys? So this, these routes, these F5, LTM, whatever it is, it's when we are going to do a policy there, we will add it as a service chaining. When we add service chain, those routes will be called service chain routes. Okay, so the third route type, service chain routes. Any confusion in any of these routes? Show OMP, you can see the route. Show OMP T logs, you can see the second type of route. And service chain route, show OMP services, you can see these type of routes. So three type of routes in OMP system, there are three type of routes and these are the commands to watch that. So there's a, so what is the centralized policy? How does it actually work? So very interesting thing is policy itself is never pushed to the VH routers. Only the results of the control plane policies are advertised to the VH routers via OMP. So, actual policy is not sent to them. Let's take the, take an example that uh, two inspectors, they have a problem, right? They go to a senior person, right? Maybe commissioner or something else. The commissioner tells them unofficially that, you know, the inspector A should not talk to inspector B. But he is not giving any kind of written information to these people. He's just threatening them or telling them or you know, giving a policy to them that you will not talk to each other. That's all in the future because you guys keep on fighting. So here what has happened is nothing written, nothing in written has been given to the different sites. But the resultant, resultant policy has been given to both. Which means the real policy was not given, only the results. They were told the final result is you should not talk to each other. What was the policy? Generally, the policy says, policy says the higher authority have to give a written letter to these guys, maybe terminating them or doing something else or something else. Maybe transferring him to another site or something else. Right? But we, he's not passing that. So the full policy is not passed. Only the result of the policies. So just site A is told to talk, not to talk to site B or site C is told to talk to site B. 
So when we actually go to the device and see that is there some type of policy pushed only on vSmart, that policy will be there, but that policy will not be anywhere else. Only on vSmart you will see that. If you go to the respective V edges and try to see the policy, you will not be able to see that. Local policy you can see if you have created a local policy. So default behavior uh, of the vSmart. Each VS device sends all site local prefix log route toward the controller using established DTLS connection. The vSmart controller accepts all OMP routes, right? Accepts all OMP routes, OMP T log service, and stores them in the respective route table. So, see, vSmart is a full authority. He has to accept everybody's route. And nobody can create any policy which restricts him. No VS can do that. Only vSmart admin can do that. So by default, the policy says that vSmart controller will accept everybody's routes and all three types of routes, OMP routes, the lock routes and service routes and stores them in their respective route tables per VPN basis. Remember that behavior, right? We have done that lab also. That only VPN 1000 can talk to VPN 1000. VPN 1000 cannot talk to VPN 2000. So per VPN. Today we are going to do a lab which we'll call VPN Route Leaking, which is going to be our first control plane policy lab. And in that policy, we are going to have one VPN, VPN 1000, talking to VPN 2000 using VPN Route Leaking policy. Because by default, they can't talk to each other. The vSmart then redistributes all learned routes to all WAN edges. This results in full mesh overlay fabric. So this is, right now we are talking about default. This is all default. This is default, default behavior, vSmart default behavior. That this whole information will be passed on to everybody so that they can form full overlay tunnel to each other. Resultant routes, not the real routes. Each VH device continuously sent route updates. The vSmart updates the routing table based on each update and advertise that routing information to all VH devices. Just like OSP, if you have DR and BDR, right? In OSP, what happens? You cannot talk to each other just like that. You don't send routes to each other. Where do you send that? You send it to DR and BDR. In OSP, if you cannot talk directly, right? Only you have to be P2P if you want to talk to each other. And that is not the standard default behavior. Here also, you cannot talk to each other directly. You have to go to DRBDR and DRBDR will send all the information to each other, to these people. A consolidated route table which DRBDR has collected from the, the other devices, that information will be sent to everybody else. So by default, no policy configured. That's a default behavior. It accepts the, all the routes and redistribute all the routes into OMP. That's a default one. VSmart behavior with centralized policy. As we have seen, the default behavior of controller is to advertise all routes, OMP, TLOC, and service, which results in a full mesh overlay traffic and any to any IP reachability per VPN basis. Remember that. That is not written here. I'm telling you that. Anybody can talk to anybody, but within the same VPN, VPN 1000 to VPN 1000. However, in most cases, this is not desired network outcome that the company wants. Therefore, in most scenarios, the network topology should be customized and IP reachability must follow the company's policy. Right? You don't want that everybody talking to everybody. That's not a network. You want certain sites to talk to certain sites. You want certain sites to talk to certain sites. But if your default behavior allows them to talk to each other if the VPN number is same. That's an out-of-box experience. When we want to control route information that is stored in the controller's route table or the route information that is advertised to VHS, we provision a centralized control policy. When such a policy is applied, the behavior of controller changes as follows. Two type of policies are there. When a centralized control policy is applied in inbound direction, it filters and modifies route information that is coming from VHS before it is placed in the controller's routing table. So where, where are you applying the policy? You are applying it in to the vSmart. You are applying where? We are applying it to the vSmart. So if you are you have applied inbound policy, that means the routes, whatever you know, the routes are coming from the other side, let's say from site A or site B, it will come to vSmart 
but before entering it into it, it will be filtered with that inbound direction policy and then only it will be placed in the controller's policy. That is the purpose of incoming. It filters or modifies route information that is coming from v edges. From v edges, right? The other one is to the v edges. If you apply an outbound direction, it will be to the v edges. So, what, how does the policy is framed? Policy is framed using create a group of interest, configure topology and VPN membership, apply policies to sites and VPNs. Group of interest is just like your route map, right? In that you have class map, policy map and all those items. So, tell what, what is that you want to do with it. Then, you tell the topology that you want to create or your VPN membership and then apply the policy to the sites or the VPNs. Sites and the VPNs, not or and. So this is a structure of a centralized policy. These are different items a policy has. You can create list, site list, prefix list, VPN list, T-lock list. There are more items in it. Definition of the policy, you can choose sequence number, match or deny, right? Reject or accept and you can then apply the policy. Just like route map. Route map also has these items, right? Match this ACL and policies drop that traffic. Match this ACL and route this traffic or whatever next stop you want to reset or whatever. So the, those things that you can do in route map, same thing you can also do here also. It's the exact same structure. Activating a centralized control policy, how do you activate it? The policy is created and activated in vManage. vManage pushes the policy as a net con transaction to the vSmart controllers. The policy itself is never pushed to the vManage devices. Only the result of the policies are advertised by the vSmart controller via OMP to the overlay. It is also important to mention the vSmart controller keeps the last configured policy in its configuration database. Last updated policy is kept in the database. So you will create it vManage using netconf and SSH you will push it to the devices. So netconf is a protocol that is used by vManage for everything, even to talk to the uh, VIJs or v, uh, you know every everybody else. Inbound and outbound policy. Cisco vManage routers periodically send and receive OMP update with the vSmart controller. These OMP updates contain certain routes. When a v Smart controller receives an OMP route from VH, it performs the OMP best path algorithm and updates its own routing table. The best route that is re then re-advertised to all other various routers, same like OSPO. It collects multiple paths from each site and chooses the best path out of those, right? And put that path into its table. The best path is then re-advertised to other various routers to reach to each other. So outbound policy, one of the example is outbound policy. You see that the policy design is something like this. So if you look at this outbound policy, I am not sure where they have applied this one. It's site 2. This is site 2. So outbound policy only will impact whom? Site 2. Will only impact site 2 because it is specifically applied in outbound direction to site 2. Will it impact anybody else in the network? No, it will not. Will it impact site 1, site 2? No. It will only impact site, sorry, this is site 1, both are site 1, this is site 2. Because the policy is applied in outbound direction. So outbound direction means it always becomes very specific. You have more control over things. Right? Does not affect other sites because you have a granular control. You are outbound, you are telling where do you want to apply. I don't know why it's again and again coming same thing. Inbound policy. Now, you look at inbound policy. There's a policy applied for site 1 in incoming direction. Right? In incoming direction, what is the policy? Match route, set this. Set the preference to 90. Affects the whole overlay fabric. Right? Whole overlay is impacted because the policy is applied in inbound direction to the vSmart. 
remember that the policy is applied in inbound direction to the vSmart. So in the future, there are more networks into you know site one and all that. They will be always impacted. Once you do a couple of more, uh, you know, this is not a proper, this thing. So the theoretical uh, thing doesn't make much sense. We, what we'll do is we will do one lab and we'll see how it works. Before that, we'll go back to our topology. This was our topology, right? We have VH10, VH11 and VH13, 15 and all that. So I don't really know right now which one was what. So we'll go to VH11 and we'll see if it is working fine or not. Show control, connections. So everything is fine. Show controls. Show OMP, T logs. So yes, uh, to connect it to two sites. Let's see, show IP routes. I'm getting other site routes also, right? I'm on site, uh, what? No, these are local routes. These are local routes. So I should be actually going to, I should be going to VH11 to see what's going on there. If VH11 is getting these routes or not, I have to see that. Show IP route. I'm getting those routes. That means my tunnel is up and running. Through OMP, I'm learning these routes from where? Site number 10. Site number 10. 11 right because they have same VPN right let's go back to this and page 11 we'll do show run what is the VPN number 2000 what if this VPN number is not 2000 it is 2001 what if I change it no VPN no VPN Two thousand. I'll remove it and VPN two thousand one interface GE zero one IP address one twenty one dot eleven dot one one dot one hundred. No shut. Ah, oh, it's managed by vManage. So, we'll go to this guy. VH11 is managed by, where it is? Ah, oh, VH11. Detach the device. We'll go back here and we'll try to save the configuration one more time. It is scheduled still going on, so it is saved now. Perfect. So committed. Let's go and check that show run. VPN 2000, 2001, right? You see that now the routes that we were getting here, we will not be getting those routes. You see that? 10 routes are gone. Why? Because the 10 side, the VPN is, let's go to side 10. Show run VPN. VPN 2000. Right? And there the VPN is 2001. So here we will create our first policy known as route leaking. Because by default, what is the policy, guys? We have discussed that multiple times. What is the policy? By default, two sites can only talk if, if they have same VPN number. So if two sites want to talk to each other, they, they want to have IPsec tunnel by default, the rule says, the default rule says that you need to have same VPN number, which is also known as VRF, VPN 2000. But in our case, what is happening is we have VPN 2001. 
So I have to do this. I will go to the vSmart and on the vSmart, I have to redistribute these two. It's called route leaking or redistributing these to each other. 2000 to 2001 and 2001 to 2000. Our vSmart is already controlled by the vManage. So prime requirement is if you are doing using graphical interface, you have to make sure that you have to your vSmart should be in the control of, here it is, no? Yeah, here it is. Device attached. Your vSmart should be controlled by vManage. If vSmart is not controlled by vManage, if I detach it and I try to create a policy, when I try to apply policy, it will say, sorry, that is not possible. Because you need to have vSmart in your control. We'll do that. Let's do a lab. So our first lab starts here. This is a group of interest. Group of interest. These are the items that we have to select. Okay, so what are the two sites in question? First, we'll have a site here. What are the sites in question? The site in the question is, give it a name, VPN. Oh, sorry, site is site 10. Site number is 10. Okay, what's in the site number? 11. Site 11. VH 11, but essentially means site number 11. Okay. Site 10 and Site 11, okay, that is Site 110, it is written in the name. So Site 10, we want Site 10 and 11 to talk to each other. Which VPN in question are we talking about? We are talking about VPN 2000 is already there, 2001 also. VPN 2001, here VPN 2001. Okay, so two items are created, that's enough for the timing, we'll just go here next. And we'll try to create a custom control policy in the centralized policy. In the centralized policy, a custom control policy. And I will name it VRF leaking. Leaking 2000 routes to 2001 and 2000 routes to 2001. Default action is not reject, accept it. Okay, that's fine. Sequence number now. So, what kind of sequence are we looking at? We are looking at a route policy. We want to redistribute the routes. Sequence, okay? So, here what we are going to pick up is our VPNs. I will say I want to have VPN 2000. What action do I want to do on 2000? I want to go to actions. Accept it. And export to 2001. So, pick up 2000, export it to 2000. Okay, now another one, right? 2001 also should be able to talk to 2000. So, 2001 to accept it and 2000. Right, so what did I do? Why is not showing the two rules? What is the problem? Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot to do this. I have to add it here, not there. Right, so that's the problem. Action, let's go over to this again. 2000, action, accept, export to 2001. 2001, right, so two sequences. Let's see the policy. The first policy says export 2001 to 2000. The second policy says export 2000 to 2001. Routes coming from one location, send it to other location and another location, send it to this location. Cool. And what is it? We are leaking. Because it says some policies there or something else. I'm not sure what it is. Two or more sequence types have same name. Please re rename the policy. What is it? Acha, this is the policy. Huh? Delete. Delete. Okay, so that's the thing. So this is the policy. 2001 to 2000, 2002, 2001. So this is our policy. Now what do we do with this policy? We have to apply it in some direction. So I'll go to next. 
Okay, I this is not a data plane policy. So we'll go to control plane and we'll apply to control plane. So leave that option and we'll say VRF because something like that. Policy name. We'll apply in inbound direction on these two sites, site number 10 and site number 11. When the route come from there, okay, we will want to save the policy right now. Save the policy. If you want to preview it anytime, we can see the preview also. Let's see what is the policy created. So this is the policy created, guys. Let's apply to site 11, site 10. VPN this should be able to talk to this guy. Match route this, export to this. Match route of this site, export it to 2000. Coming from 2001, send it to 2000. Similarly, 2000 to 2001. Guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir, it's coming to me. Okay, okay. So, let's say okay to this and we will go back to our... This one, we'll see vSmart. Where is vSmart? I don't know why it is so slow. vSmart. Admin, admit, show, run. Let's see if the policy is available here or not. vSmart doesn't have the policy. What happened? We have created a policy, but it's not there. Right? Because the policy is not applied to vSmart. Policy is with vManage. Policy is not applied to vSmart. So how do we do that? We activate the policy. Now, this is the place where it will be applied to the reachable vSmarts. It says the policy will be applied to reachable vSmarts. Activate. If the vSmart was not under the control of vManage, this policy will not get applied. Remember that. In that case, what is the second solution? The second solution is you go to CLI, remember the whole syntax, and do the configuration using CLI, which is a tough task. Remembering the syntax. The policies can be when the policies are basically impacting hundreds of sites, it can even become more difficult. Let's go back to vSmart to see if uh, there is any change in his position. Show run. You see that policy is now is there. Okay, so the policy is there. Now we should see the results also. What is the result that has happened? Let's go to VH11 now. There you see that VH11, what is there? No routes from the other side. Right? Before that, there were no routes. Now let's check if the routes are there or not. You see that? The routes are there. They got redistributed to 2001. These routes became what? 2001. Although the routes are coming from which side? 2000 side. But my local thing is 2001 because those routes got redistributed to 2001. We'll go back to this. I will disable the policy again. Policy is deactivated. Right? And then we go back to not we smart, we edge will go to VH11 and see if those routes are have vanished or not. The routes are gone. Why? Because the policy is removed. Guys, any doubt, any question? Let's apply the policy again. I'll go to the sorry about this. We'll go to the policies and activate the policy. 
we'll wait till the policy gets activated and then we'll see the results again we'll go back to VH11 again and I believe like if you have another service uh, VPN let us see plus and two okay and uh, you can simply include that like how, how would that uh, work like if you have another service VPN is that a, a, another site yeah you create policy you know create one more policy for 2002 Right now is one policy there for 2002 and 2001. If you have a new policy, add one more policy in this uh, thing. If those are different sites, if those are different sites, then you create one more policy under that. So let's see. So again, you see the routes are now back. The routes are there. But these routes were gone just a couple of seconds back. The routes were gone. Now the routes are back again. Why? Because the policy is applied. So, you know, there are two ways of doing it. One is that you can do using the policy option here in vManage. If you do not want to do it using this one, you have to remember this whole thing using CLI. And then just copy paste this whole thing and apply it using the CLI. That is also an option. That is also one option. Let's say, how do I do that? I can just go to policy. I'll deactivate this policy again. Deactivated the policy. Now I'll go to the templates. I'll remove the vSmart under this control of this guy. So I have removed vSmart under the control of vManage. Okay, now everything is clear here. Let's go to the vSmart. What happened to this? Oh, it's so slow. vSmart and uh, conflict D. First, let's do the showdown. Let's see showdown. Policy is gone, right? The policy is gone. You see that. Now, what I'll do is conflict D. I'm going to I have copy pasted the policy from there. I will apply this policy now. Now I've applied this policy using CLI. So what do we do? We go to VIG11 again, VIG11. And the routes will check again. Show IP. Sorry, show IP in the route. So I'm at the, uh, sorry. I'm at vSmart still. I have to go here, show IP, and I forgot to do the change there, right? So here is the routes. Here are the routes. Routes are back. So both the methods, if you know the syntax, you can do using the syntax. So it's a good idea to keep uh, these scripts ready. Right, because see, eventually what happens is if you have, after some time, you become perfect in CLI itself. So you can create CLI scripts and all that. Or you can copy it from the GUI, create it in the GUI and copy it in the CLI as for the backup also. Right, so if you look at right now, machine is extremely slow. Note that we manage this uh, our machine itself. So if I go here, I go to the templates, my vSmart is not under our control. There is no device attached. Policy, I go to the policy, the policy is also not attached. It's activated as false. Also, let's try to activate it now. Do you think it will work? See that? Policy cannot be applied. Guys, it's a good idea to have one WhatsApp created. 
create a WhatsApp group and uh, post the link here so that everybody else can join. If there is any problem, you know, let's say like yesterday I was not well, at least we should have that information. Although Amit is sending that information in the CCI Enterprise group. Uh, and one more thing, uh, because actually I still haven't got the particular link for the drive. The last link that you have shared was only for the file link for the day to, day to video. So would you be able to send that uh, drive link with us? Yeah, I'll just do that again because I've sent it to everybody. I'll just, let me check one more time. And also please uh, share your number so that whenever we do have a doubt, we can uh, create a group and post those doubts on, on that particular group. Yeah, it's a good idea to create a group and my number is double line, double line. Uh -huh. I just type it here if you guys want. Double line, double line, one, six, eight, four, seven, five. Okay. Here is the drive link I'm posting in the chat window. There is no WhatsApp group as such, you know, so somebody has to create one WhatsApp group. Yeah, I will create one. Okay, perfect. If you can post it here in the chat window itself, it will be easy for, uh, because I see a lot of candidates are from different uh, countries connected. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so coming back to the vSmart again, you see that I was trying to activate the policy, but the policy does not get activated. Why? Because vSmart is not in the control of vManage, is not in vManage mode. So I can create a policy. Creation of policy is not an issue, but it has to be only applied when the vSmart is under the control of. So I'll go back again and uh, we go to vSmart. This template will get attached to the vSmart device. So we have a template created last time. Attach. Okay. Okay, then I'll go to the policies again and now I'll try to activate this policy. Remember that there was an error last time because vSmart was not under my control. So here it's again in our control, I activate this policy. Now here is very interesting thing and a little complicated to understand. Let's say if I create one more template here, sorry, one more policy here, Right, any ABC policy, I add a policy, the policy will get created. But at one time, guys, you have to remember this. At one time, only one centralized policy is possible to connect to the vSmart. Which means if you create 10 policies, only one policy can be activated. So what you have to do is if you want to do whatever further changes, you have to edit it. You want to, let's say this was a control plane policy, you want to apply a data plane policy also. So you can apply a data plane policy, you want to have, you know, some other kind of application away routing. Within this policy itself, you will have that policy. You cannot have two policies activated at the same time. You cannot have two policies activated at the same time. But within one policy, you can have multiple nested policies. One another inside it, you know, another inside it, you can have nested policy, policy under policies. Under one policy, you can have as many control plane policies as you want, no problems. You can, you remember that class map, policy map, right? How many policy maps can you apply on one interface? One. In Cisco routers, Cisco firewall, other devices, how many policy maps can you apply in a, in a interface in one direction? One policy map. So here also the same story. But within that policy map, you can create multiple class map, multiple policy maps, and then you can have multiple actions on those policy maps, but put them under single policy.
right? So that's one of the examples of policies. Now let's go back to add a policy. So this is the group of interests that we were talking about. You can choose color. We will, uh, the next lab we are going to do, we will have uh, different type of policy created for you know, different reasons. We will also have SLA class. We are also having uh, TLOC related, TLOC extension and all that. We will create those policies when I teach you TLOC extension and all that. Natting related policies also, uh, we will be doing it. Policing related policies also will be doing it where we can have, you know, a certain policy applied to some interface or a certain VPN and you can choose if the traffic is more than this much. This thing you can basically drop, but we are going to have it in the detail. I just want to show you the group of interest items which are there. We have applications. If you are filtering certain applications, let's say you are filtering uh, some kind of BitTorrents on Facebook and Amazon and all that and your company you want to block that particular site or, you know, something. So you can choose these items or you can choose application family, which is social media and network services, web, audio, video, instant messengers and different type of items. So category based blocking. We can do it from here and we can also do it using URL filtering option in the security. So either we can do it in the policy here or we can go to the security and we can choose URL filtering option here, application firewall and URL filter. But the values are still have to be created at that place. Right, so apply, uh, create a firewall and then apply those policies basically. That is the next topic after we are finished with the, the policies. We have a couple of more examples to be done for centralized policy. And then we have uh, examples for localized policy as well. Then we will move on to the next option, which is security. So guys, any question, any doubt so far? This is generally a little complicated topic to understand, but I've tried making it very easy by giving small examples, not complicated examples. Okay, so we were at policy. Let me show you a little bit more of this. That is correct, Manoj. I actually created a server for you guys. Uh, my lab uh, in charge, uh, his name is Avanish. I'm not sure how many of you are aware of him. You can ask him the server access. Uh, you know, I've created the server ready. So you can ask him the server access and you can access the SD WAN server. So these are the group of interest. Once the group of interest is defined, which is your class web, you can say these are class web items. Remember that in class web, what do you have? Match ACL, match IP route, match desktop, match BGP attribute, match that, right? So these are match items. What do you want to match? And then you what action do you want to take? The action is either you can have a Hub and spoke. So these are VPN uh, examples. You can have hub and spoke. You can have mesh. And uh, next class, we are going to do this uh, hub and spoke and mesh itself. Then you can have, this is the one that we use today. Control, custom control. Everything can be done using custom control. It gives you amazing flexibility. Manoj, well, yes, you can set up lab in your computer as well. It requires massive resources. Around 64 GB of RAM for proper functioning of the SD WAN lab. Otherwise, it will be too slow. Okay, so these are the policy items. So, policy items. Next, after policy item, what is it? And so here it is hub and spoke or mesh or full mesh or partial mesh, route and delog related stuff. Or if you have created previously any policy, you want to retrieve that policy. Okay, you can retrieve that policy. Also, if you have created a policy before, you can import that policy. Here is only one policy. You see that? There is only one policy. Further, then VPN membership. This is again data plane related stuff, which VPN belongs to which site and you can convert them into. So generally people don't use this option. People use mesh or partial mesh or full mesh kind of mechanism. But you can also create using VPN membership. Let's say three three people want to be part of one group. So that's fine. They want full access to each other. They want to be part of one group. That is absolutely fine. Okay, once this is done, the policy is done. Now this is control plane policy. Remember that this option was control plane. 
if you reach up to here, we did not configure this option during my policy creation, if you remember that. Because this is related to purely data plane traffic. This is purely related to data plane traffic. So, I create a sequence here and what is the sequence? Do you see that? These are different as compared to those. This is related to data plane traffic. There is nothing, no control plane discussion here. Which website you want to block? What DNS list you want to block? Cloud SaaS application that you want to permit or block, right? Here I have this Oracle, go to meeting, Zoho, Zoom, right? Ready-made SaaS applications. And what do I want to do that? I don't want in my company maybe to allow Zoom, right? So, I'll just go to these guys. Or maybe I want to assign more bandwidth to the Zoom and all that. So, we'll still on. Let's say Zoom. Zoom is not there. Interesting. Citrix go to meeting. So these are the ready-made options. Amazon Video, Amazon Web Services, Intuitive, Dropbox and all that is there. Zoom is not there. Okay, let's say we pick up Sugar CRM as an option. And what do we want to do with it? What do we want to do with it? We want to provide certain SLAs, right? So I want certain bandwidth to be applied to it. So SLA class that, that I was creating, right? There. Then we can say that this application should get higher traffic, higher priority, etc. Or if there is a cloud SLA, we can choose. There was some kind of cloud SLA related stuff. Here is the cloud SLA. Where's by default enabled? So this option is purely related to data plane traffic related to data plane traffic and here it is if you want to apply certain policies related to the interfaces and all that or to the vpn type etc on data plane here it is you see that these are the options this is purely your class map data this is purely route map class map policy map is control plane route maps are where do you apply route maps interfaces Right, so those are those are data plane items. Class map policy map is applied on control plane. Route maps are applied on data plane. So this is where you create your. You want to create a, you know anything related to packet length. You want to deny certain traffic. You want to block certain traffic based on source port or destination port, etc. We can do that. Like what can you do on the interface? The same items, and you can choose. 